Testosterone replacement, does it help or harm? Dr. Bruce Hoyle is a specialist in anti-aging and hormone replacement, and he'll explain the latest findings. Bruce, thanks for coming. Larry, thank you for having me. Bruce, you've been doing this for over 20 years now, and it's very common for people to request hormone replacement. Tell me the ins and outs of it. What are the symptoms of low testosterone? Men would complain of low energy, mood issues. They may have gained a little bit of weight. They've lost some muscle mass. Libido is down. Uh, erectile dysfunction, maybe fatigue. So there's, there's really quite a few things that they may complain about. So if they come into you and then you measure testosterone levels, right? So which testosterone level do you measure? Is, are there different ones? Yes, there's a total testosterone and then more importantly I feel is a free testosterone which is a more accurate measurement of what they need. So when they're going to a doctor they want to make sure they at least ask for the free testosterone and then you make a determination based on just the level or the symptoms or both? I think it's really both. If they have a normal level and uh, they have all these other symptoms, you might have to look at some other diagnosis. What would be like a, an abnormal level? I know the range is what, from 200 to 1,000 or something? What is it? The uh, up to 1,000 for a total. And, and again, it's men go through this andropause where at, at 1,000, let's say, that's when they were 20 years old, and it just slowly declines with each passing decade, whereas women, they'll go through menopause rather abruptly. Mm -hmm. so it's a different curve. So it's, the symptoms are much more subtle in men because they occur over a longer time frame. And normally your testosterone starts to drop when you're 30 or 40? What, it's, what you... it's, it's, it's dropping right after 20. It's slowly declining. It's dropping as we speak, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so oh, I feel tired. <laughs> so now I'm going to give you a shot and we'll get going here. So there's different ways to administer it. So you decide to give the testosterone. You're a candidate for it. Go, go through these different treatments that we have here. Certainly. So all of these are bioidentical, so these are n no different than what the body would make. And that, that's a distinction from the synthetic steroids that people talk about. So uh, this is a injection that can be administered uh, sometimes subcutaneously or in the muscle. Subcutaneously means just, just under just, the skin? Just in the, in the fat. This is a, a cream that, that has a little clicking thing, and you, as you turn this, the cream starts to come out. So it's a set, it's a like set dose. Yes, and so you would do a click and then that's, that's your dose and then you would rub this uh, on the arm, something like that. So you have to give it on the arm? Can you put it on the you can, you can You can put it really just about uh, in a, on a male anywhere. Anywhere, on, but on, the arms the, are preferred. A, uh, uh, or even upper, where the skin's a bit thinner because you're, you're trying to get good absorption oh, from the so cream. You, you do it here mainly because of thinner, thinner skin, okay. Right, this is a gel, which we can squeeze out a little bit here, I hope. Oop, squeezed out a lot. Um, and then this is a, a, a delivery system. It's been around for decades, but sort of uh, f uh, fell out of popularity and is now coming back again. It's a pellet, so it's basically bioidentical testosterone in a, in a pellet. And this would be inserted just below the belt line on the hip. And uh, this, the skin would be anesthetized. This uh, trocar would be placed uh, through, the, through the skin, it just goes in up to about this uh, hub in the uh, fat layer. And then the pellets, and there would be several of these, would be loaded in like so. And then this, uh, just a little plunger that simply uh, pushes, pushes the pellets out. And that doesn't and, hurt? Uh, it's, uh, it's like going to the dentist. You do a little freezing and everything's fine and this lasts about five or six months in men so all of these methods are uh, equally uh, acceptable and, and can work. Just one pellet is adequate for most people? These are 200 milligrams and uh, the average male would get about 1200 so there would be six of these inserted sort of fanned out under the skin and, and again just as in the fat layer. And do they cause like skin irritation where your skin gets red or infections no, or anything like that? Not very, uh, it would be very, very rare to see that. And they just slowly melt. Uh, in the men, uh, this will last about five or six months. Now women, we also will get testosterone and some estrogen. It lasts about three to four months in them. So it's just an alternative for people that don't want to bother with these other modalities, but probably the cream is the most popular. Most popular. So with that is once every six, the creams are twice a day or once a day, or it depends on the manufacturer? Usually once, yes. Uh, manufacturer and but generally speaking once or twice a day. Once or twice a day and then what about the shots? How, um, 
shots can be intramuscular once a month. Some uh, people are doing them subcutaneously on a more frequent basis, like weekly or even biweekly. Now, you have all this variety. Now, the, the pellet, you said, is once every six months? Uh, five to six months for men. Women that get pellets would be three to four months. Three to four months. And then the cream is once a day or twice a day? Creams or gels would be put on once or twice a day. Depends on the manufacturer and the product. And then the injections uh, is, uh, in, if it's put in the muscle, they're typically once a month. It can be injected uh, in the fat layer under the skin. We call that subcutaneous. That could be on a weekly or possibly biweekly basis. So the dose, if you give it, um, like in, in the fat, the shot, that you give a smaller dose if you give it every week. So the, the, the monthly dose will be the same. If you give it once a, once a month in the muscle, it's the same as you add up all the weekly it, doses? It, no, it might be different beca be because different. There's a, the, the absorption from those different tissues oh, is, is different. And, and then this is all at the end going to be based on a blood level that you'll obtain okay. to see if it's where you want it to be. So the... Um, you determine the final dose based on blood level and based on improvement in symptoms. Is Correct. That right? Then what about the side effects? Do you get acne with this? Do you get bloating, leg swelling, breast enlargement? What, what kind of side effects? Side do you effects, get? again, because these are, you're really putting someone into a, a physiologic range with the hormone levels they had when they were just a younger person, mm -hmm. are really very rare. Occasionally, women will report acne. Uh, gynecomastia, breast enlargement could occur in men, but again, it's very rare. Men might experience alopecia, that would, uh, hair loss, that would be more common, although there are medicines you can uh, take to, to minimize that or prevent that. So probably of all the side effects, maybe hair loss might be the biggest one. That I would say so. Yeah. Now, when you give testosterone, that is, men have estrogen in them also, right? Correct. Do you ever give estrogen to men? No, they, they do not need it. They are, their body is going to break down some of that testosterone into estrogen. And that's what happens in the women as well. In fact, we'll give the women 75 milligrams of testosterone and maybe only 25 milligrams of estrogen because most of the testosterone is going to go down the estrogen pathway. In the women? In the women. So the doses for uh, testosterone in women, you're giving it for the same reason, improve libido, improve muscle strength, reducing body fat, all the things, kind of similar to what you do in Exactly. Men. Correct. But the dose, of course, is much, 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 much lower. Much. So uh, let me ask you about this uh, real quickly. What about bodybuilders taking anabolic steroids? That's a different animal, right? It's a totally different animal. Those are testosterone-like compounds taken in doses that are way beyond the physiologic range and have all kinds of consequences, uh, adverse effects on your lipid profile, uh, liver damage, even liver tumors. And when I did a study, I mentioned that to you, on bodybuilders who did anabolic steroids, they had very early onset of heart disease. So it causes, in my mind, atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries at an early age. So it's testosterone-like drugs, but they're not the same as we're doing here. Exactly. And I think there's a lot of confusion about that because some people have thought that testosterone replacement is not really, possibly not safe. And what is your feeling? What, what are the benefits to doing this besides the improvement of erectile dysfunction? So there's several studies out there showing that when you take bioidentical testosterone, it has a, an improvement on your lipid yeah. profile, insulin sensitivity, and many other things that are involved in heart disease and stroke. But the same can't be said about the synthetic high doses that bodybuilders use. So in, and I know we kind of agree on this, but in your mind, they're pre the overwhelming evidence is that this is beneficial to, to people. Not, not only beneficial in reducing heart disease and stroke, but all-cause mortality. So dying from diabetes-related complications, perhaps, or osteoporosis, fractured hips, all that stuff. Exactly. So the argument that this is not beneficial is really based on, on what? I mean, it's based on confusion between the synthetic products right. that bodybuilders have used and the health issues they had and extrapolating it to bioidentical hormone replacement and that uh, those arguments applied to, again to men and women. Years ago people were deathly afraid to take hormone testosterone because it may cause prostate cancer. Where does that stand these days? 
we believe that testosterone does not cause prostate cancer. That's never been shown. But if you get prostate cancer, you can't be on testosterone. And we used to say forever, for the rest of your life. Over the last half decade, those attitudes have changed. And now men who are uh, certainly five years prostate cancer free, I've had some patients referred to me that are only two and three years mm -hmm. out, and their and their urologists are saying it's okay. You can you can put them back on testosterone now. And of course, the heart disease risks and all that start to accelerate again if they're not taking treatment. So the bottom line is, what you've been doing for 20, 25 years, is really very well supported in the medical literature now, and this is a beneficial treatment for men and women if it's supervised properly and done under the right circumstances. Absolutely. And you have a whole host of options available that you showed us here. I didn't know about the pellet, but that's really interesting. And the very last question, there's no pill for this, right? Nothing that you can swallow. No, it, it, the absorption is in metabolism taken orally is not, for, again, for these products, it doesn't, doesn't work. work very well. Thank you very much. I learned a lot. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me.